Joining us now, Stefano Morani, partner at Clade Investment Management. He's talking about the Clade Managed Equity Fund. Now, Clade operates from London and South Africa and offers long only and hybrid investments for individuals. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening. Thank you for having me. In terms of your philosophy uh, and, and looking specifically at the fund that we're highlighting this evening, mm -hmm. you're either in equity, cash or derivative plays, yeah. uh, you're hedging your exposure via the derivatives. That would be a fair assessment. Yes, absolutely. I think fundamentally um, our philosophy is one of a simplicity because I believe that that's the key. And secondly, we're very much top-down focused. So in other words, what that means, we have a top-down approach with the way we actually construct the portfolio to begin with. And thereafter, we use global macroeconomic factors to decide exactly how much exposure we're going to take to the market. So what that means, to, to describe that on a slightly more simplistic level, we'll cr construct our portfolio using fundamental um, data as opposed to constructing it using stock picking on the basis of research. And the reason that we do that is a very simple one. We believe fundamentally that it's incredibly difficult for stock pickers to go out there and to consistently outperform the market. It's not impossible. Completely different philosophy from, from Linda and Reese M that you just heard table. I was watching and smiling. There are, there are a handful of managers that are capable of doing it. So it's not impossible, but it is incredibly difficult. So the, the, uh, the approach that we adopt instead is to say, let's rather look at, let's take an agnostic portfolio, and that agnostic portfolio chases value as opposed to chasing fundamental research. It means that from an asset management point of view, we spend far less time focusing on research trying to pick individual stocks, but rather we create a well-diversified portfolio. We invest the assets in that portfolio, and then we spend the rest of our time actually considering what's happening from a global macroeconomic well, perspective. Well, this is good because join the debate that we've been having tonight. <laughs> Tell us what is happening from a, a global macro perspective. Um, all right. I think the, uh, I'm, I, I'm going to use a little bit of creative license here and I'm going to quote Churchill. Um, something that he said was, uh, you can always rely on a politician to make absolutely the right decision after they've done everything else. And this is the situation that Europe finds itself in right now. Europe is stymied, it's sitting there, it doesn't have the political will to make the right decisions. The decisions that it, are, that it that, you know, that is making right now is always a case of too little, too late. What we believe fundamentally right now is that someone in Europe needs to stand up and say unequivocally, you know, we will support Italy going forward. You know, regardless of whatever happens moving forward, we will always support their debt issuance program. Now, just the mere fact that they'd say that, you'd be in a position where automatically the market would lose a lot of its nervousness that it has exactly. right now. And if you look at that Italian 10-year bond yield, I think 6.7%, spiking again close to that 7%. What did it touch? 7.25 yeah. last Thursday. That's exactly so the market right. doesn't believe the plan on the table for, for Europe. Kevin, let, let's bring you in here um, and just looking at the European situation unfolding. We've had very divergent views on the desk this evening. Do you feel that Europe is going to survive? Market doesn't believe it. As we said, <laughs> if you watch those spreads, uh, <laughs> Spanish bond yields are ticking up, I think 6.4%. I yeah. saw a number being bandied about. Uh, let's, let's get your view. I think it will survive. It just depends on what form and whether they will still have the EMU and everything else. So, I mean, that's the debate. And to be honest, we really don't know. We, I agree with you. The political will hasn't been there. Um, I will say one thing. Overnight, and Angela Merkel, for the first time has in the last two years, has started speaking about the need for greater fiscal union and greater European integration. Well, thank goodness that's she's just started talking she about it. it. How she's going to achieve it is the next question. <laughs> but there, there's still a lot that needs to be done in Europe. And I mean, I don't think anyone knows how it's going to turn out. I'm rushing through this because I need to translate this into sure. investment uh, thesis and, and what you're seeing. U.S., double dip recession or not? I don't think we're necessarily in the market to sit and try and predict the future. The way that we run it is that we look for value by using a fundamental basis on the portfolio. And once we've selected the portfolio, we then look... When you say fundamental basis... Uh, so very, very, very simply, the way that we, that we construct our portfolio is that we take the entire universe of shares in South Africa and then instead of um, weighting them by market capitalization, which the Aussie does, mm -hmm. what we do instead 
is that we weight them on the basis of cash flow from operations. So very, very simply, we just we absolutely believe in that old adage, cash is king. Cash is king. We look at the cash flow generated by these companies and we weight them according to the absolute cash that they generate. All right, so then let's jump to what you are investing in right now and why. Talk us through sure, your, your three top holdings. Three top holdings. We've got Billiton in there. Um, after that, we've got Anglo-American, and then after that, we have uh, S, uh, uh, SAB. Yeah. So, Billiton and, and Anglo-American, sorry, just trying to get the, the thought mm -hmm. in this macroeconomic view and how that affects your, your investment philosophy. Is that because China is a hot space you believe in a soft landing rather than a hard landing? With, with regards to the construction of the actual equities, it's very, very much algorithmic driven. So the portfolios are selected purely according to the actual cash that they're generating. The research doesn't span any further than that. What we then do is with the holding in the portfolio, we then decide how much exposure to take to that portfolio in totality. So we put 92% in the stocks according to that weighting. So we have a well-balanced portfolio of 40 stocks. And then we simply decide based on what's happening in the markets right now, do we want to buy protection for the portfolio? And if we do, we then short the market using all Z40 futures. Or alternatively, if we believe that the market is starting to improve, we'll then start to unwind those all Z40 future positions. And the net result is that we're adhering to our mandate, which is about first and foremost absolute return. And then after that, we need to keep a very, very How low does volatility. Your macro view impact though your your choice to to hold anglo-american and, and bhp bulletin to the extent that you do the, there's the, our macro view has absolutely no influence so whatsoever i just want to we're, clarify we're, that yeah, so there's no this is all um, done algorithmically we're we're completely agnostic to the actual selection of the stocks we keep we just cash is king and you like that adage, cash is king. <laughs> if we go back to Stefanucci well, again, shall we bring that analogy back on the table? <laughs> Strong balance sheet. It's there for a reason. It's there for a reason. Weather the storm. King. Just in terms of your weighting to cash at the moment or uh, exposure, where, where are you positioned at the moment? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good question. Um, right now, um, focusing on the fact that we are trying to deliver a particularly low volatility um, in our fund, and given the backdrop of what's going on in Europe, and all of these talks about double dip recession, what's happening in China, slow down, property bubble, et cetera, et cetera. There's an enormous amount of volatility in the market. Because there's so much volatility, in order to deliver on our mandate, we reduce the exposure. Because of all of this volatility and uncertainty, we're sitting with a hedge of approximately 40 to 50% of the portfolio. That varies on a day-to-day -day basis, but we're currently hedged on about 40% of our portfolio. 